This is the first technical video in the series on Humanoid AI in Unity. These first few videos will be about setting up a test bed for AI experiments. They won't go too much into the details of AI yet. So what is a humanoid model that we can use in Unity? I'm going to start with a ridiculous example. Within Unity, you can create simple 3D shapes like cylinders and spheres. So I'm making my own humanoid model. This is playing at 4x speed because I don't really move the mouse this fast. So, ta-da! Here's my humanoid model. Is that a humanoid model that we can use? Of course not, but I did that to make a couple of points. First, Unity is not intended to be the modeling environment. 3D models are typically made in a different tool and then imported into Unity. And second, my stick figure obviously does not bend and move. Unity has a built-in notion of a humanoid skeleton. In Unity, any humanoid model needs to have what Unity calls an avatar, which is essentially a description of that model's bone structure and how the bone structure relates to Unity's internal skeleton model. So let's look at a better example. We can download a free asset called Space Robot Kyle from the Unity Asset Store. Then we find Robot Kyle's model and drag it into the scene. Let's look at Space Robot Kyle in the hierarchy. Kyle himself is a hierarchy of game objects starting at his waist and then expanding through all of his body parts. Each step in the hierarchy has its own mathematical transform. So we can rotate Kyle's elbow or shoulder or turn Kyle's head. We're getting closer. Next, let's look at a more complete example. Let's go back to the Unity Asset Store and download Unity's standard assets. I am using Unity version 2018.4 to be compatible. After the standard assets are loaded, I open this sample scene called Character Third Person AI. This scene has a character model named Ethan. If I run the scene in Unity and click anywhere in the game window, Ethan runs to that location. As an experiment, can we put Robot Kyle in the scene instead of Ethan? We could do that right now, but Kyle won't do anything. He'll just stand there. And that's because we haven't yet mapped Kyle's bone structure to the bone structure that Unity expects. So let's do that now and then replace Ethan with Kyle. This process is called rigging. We need to change the animation type to humanoid to match Kyle's bones against Unity's skeleton model. In this case, the process has already succeeded. We can click Configure to see the details. We see on the left the bones that Unity requires for a humanoid model, and on the right how Kyle's bones match up well. There are more detailed bones for the head and hands. Some of the bones are optional. There are options to help with the rigging process because depending on the model being imported, it is not always this easy. The bone mapping is saved in this 
Robot Kyle Avatar component. So now that we've rigged Robot Kyle, we can use him in Unity. Let's go ahead and replace Ethan with Kyle. First, let's disable Ethan's model. Then we add Robot Kyle under the character controller. We disable Kyle's animator component because in this case, the controller has an animator. We do need to replace Ethan's avatar with Kyle's avatar. That's it. We run the scene and we have Kyle running to the points where we click instead of Ethan. Before ending this video, I can't say something about AI. You may have wondered why the Unity sample scene is called Character Third Person AI and the controller is called AI Third Person Controller. Where is the AI? The character just runs from point A to point B, right? Actually, this example is using Unity's NavMesh system, which includes an AI algorithm for pathfinding called A star. It hasn't looked very impressive because there are no obstacles in the scene, but we can change that. I'm moving the camera back a bit so we can see more in the scene window. I'm going to add some cubes to the scene and stretch them out to form obstacles. We need to go to the navigation view. Now the blue areas are walkable. We need to rebake these regions so that the obstacles and a bit of space around them are not walkable. Don't worry if this isn't familiar. I will go over this in detail in a future video. Now we can give Kyle some new destinations, and using a bit of AI, he calculates a path around the obstacles. So I hope you understand now that a humanoid model in Unity needs to have a bone structure that is compatible with Unity's internal skeleton and that the mapping between the model's bones and Unity's skeleton is stored in a component called an avatar. There are a few ways to get or make humanoid models for Unity. There are pre-made models available. There are models or model toolkits where you can easily customize or configure humanoid models, or there are tools that let you virtually sculpt models from scratch. In the next video, I will show some examples and compare the models that we download or that we make. Videos after that will show how to set up the environment for our AI testbed. See you in the next video on Humanoid AI in Unity.